Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Okay, it's time to make some sparks fly in something a little bit different to normal. I'm going to do some high voltage experiments. Now, what we've got here is a flyback transformer out of a TV, and I've wired some things up to it. Here's one big long wire. Hopefully, should make get some sparks coming out of that. And this thing over here is the driver circuit. It's simply just a relay that is going to hopefully turn on and off loads of times really quickly and pulse the thing. Hopefully, that's what it should do. Now, you must understand that I know absolutely nothing about the pins on these things. I don't know what is connected to what, so I just tested this with an ohm meter and found that these pins here have sort of a half an ohm resistance between them, so I thought I'd connect it up to this and see if we get anything. So now, I'm going to turn the lights down, by which I mean simply remove one of the fluorescent tubes from my room, and let's see if we can make some sparks. Okay, so I'm about to connect up the power. I hope this doesn't interfere with the camera and produce a corrupt recording. It'll probably interfere with the microphone, but let's see. Okay. Well, you might be able to hear the relay clicking on and off like mad there. It does seem to be interfering with the microphone a little bit. Let's go over to the flyback coil that I've got connected here. Turn the camera's mic off. Move that wire up like that, so you can more see what I'm doing here. Ooh. I may have imagined something, but I think I just saw a little spark. Um, I'm not even doing anything yet. I think I saw a little spark. No, I'm not imagining things. There is a little spark between these two pins here. And I even, I'm not even doing anything with the high voltage wire at the moment. Anyway, uh, let's see if we get anything. don't know if you could see that on the camera. Let's see. Any arcing? Oh, there's a little bit of a spark there. Okay, nothing with that pin. I want to get some sparks with this one. It seems to be this pin here. Okay, this one is producing some Mondo Sparks. I'm sure you can hear that interfering with the microphone as well, but... Yeah, I'm getting something out of that. Nothing else seems to do anything. Right, well, that seems to be a little bit of a success, though, actually... Okay, let's just turn the microphone off. I mean, turn the relay off so you can hear me again. Well, that, uh... seemed to be a bit of a success there. Now, let's move on to... Actually, I don't even dare touch this thing even though I have turned it off. Um, I don't know if there's any residual voltage in there. I'll just touch it see if that... Okay, I think that might be discharged. Let's move this very safely out of the way. Because now... Let's experiment with one of these. This, my friends, is a microwave oven transformer. And I've been playing about with it, and boy does it spark. Now, I'm going to turn this thing on. You can see where I've connected the uh, sort of driver thingy. I'm going to zoom in on the transformer itself. The camera's gone a bit dark, but I think you can still see it. Now, let the sparking commence. 
this will probably do some major interference with the microphone but here we go yep that looks pretty vicious let's put it across this piece of sellotape okay there's no Ooh, did you see that that one was at least one and a half centimeters there Hang on. I may be wrong, but I think that's actually cut into the silicate. Well, that was pretty interesting. The tape itself does not conduct until it cuts a hole in it, apparently. I think that's what it's doing. Unless there was already a hole there. Oh, we got a little bit of fire there. Saw some, saw a little flame. That's great. Okay, well, let's see if this actually does cut a hole in anything. I'm gonna take a little bit of paper and I'll put that on the on the transformer. I don't know if the electricity is going to go through it, but there seems to be some kind of static build-up around the transformer because that paper just seemed to stick. Anyway, I'm going to turn it on again. Get me high voltage lead. Does it go through the paper? Yep. It can arc through the paper. Right, let's inspect the results. Oh yeah, that's cut a hole. I think that's cut some holes through the paper all right. Look at that. Now those holes were not in the paper before. Okay, let's try some other things. How about tin foil? Let's see what happens if I put that on the transformer. And in case you're wondering what's on the end of this wire, that's just a little piece of graphite out of a pencil thought that might make it connect better. Right, okay, it's on. Let's try a little piece of chocolate bar wrapper. Foil sealed for extra freshness. Let's see if this is real foil. There doesn't seem to be much connect conductivity here. Hey, I can cut through this thing. not like that before I uh, did this. Can you see that? It's actually vaporized some of the foil off that thing. What shall we try next? I know, let's try to make some fire. As you can probably see now, I have this transformer on a plate. Now it's not because I want to eat it, but if anything catches fire, I want to make sure that it doesn't fall onto this a work surface and start burning everything. Now I have a cotton swab on top of this transformer. This end is soaked in WD-40 and this end is soaked in methylated spirit. And we'll see if we get any kind of ignition. So I'm going to turn it on and pick up my me, me voltage lead. I'll get this thing to stay on. Right, let's see. WD-40 end.
That is not going to go, is it? Methylated spirit end. Oh! We got fire! Omga fire. I wonder if it's conductive. Oh, my wire's on fire. Never mind, it stopped. I think that pretty much answers that question. Scratched CD that doesn't play anymore, so let's see if a scratched CD will still provide us with some entertainment. Wow, this stuff is flying everywhere. There you go, everybody. If you've got a scratch CD, all you need is a few thousand volts and you've got entertainment again. This is a scratched CD, everybody. Well, it sure won't play now. Okay, tube time. Let's see what happens when this fluorescent light meets a few thousand volts. I don't know if it's gonna light up or not do anything, but let's find out. Well, it's doing something. In the camera, it looks like there's light going up the thing, but... At my end, it just looks like it's flashing slightly. Let's connect this up a little bit more directly. Right, this should make some bright light. I have one end of the tube connected to this little transformer here, which is connected to the um, body, or case, or whatever you want to call it, of this transformer. Now that's simply there to act as a ballast, because I don't want to make this tube explode, or something like that. And the other end is just simply going to touch onto one of the pins there, and it should light up. So, turn the cam's light out. Start this up. Can't seem to get it to stay on. Right. Let there be light. I just touched the end of that wire and shot myself. That was a bit of a stupid thing to do. So, that's um, a few things I can do with a few thousand volts of electricity. I can make sparks jump, I can cut through plastic, destroy CDs, make fire, make fluorescent lights flash, and, of course, electrocute myself. That last thing of the things I just did there was not intentional, but what are you going to do? At least it didn't hurt. Just more surprised me than anything. Now time for the boring bit. This is the schematic of how I made all those sparks.
This is the power supply, it's just ordinary 12 volt DC. There's a capacitor here and diodes to protect it from spikes and surges. Here's the relay, which is just a SPST relay. And there's the transformer for the high voltages. Now, how this thing works is that as soon as the circuit's turned on, the relay gets energized, which makes the contacts close, and that connects the high voltage transformer to the power supply. But because this takes so much power from the power supply, there's no power left to energize the relay, so the relay opens again, which disconnects the transformer from the power supply. And because the transformer's disconnected, there's more power left to energize the relay again, so the whole thing goes and basically just self-oscillates and we get a high voltage here. Well, that's just about it for this edition of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Remember, if you like these videos, feel free to subscribe. And don't forget to tell your friends about Cool Dude Clem. Get them to subscribe as well. Anyway, for more of my videos, click on me right now to visit my channel. Or, if you want to see more from the workshop, click on the video on the right. So until next time, goodbye. Now let's take a look at some of the outtakes. Okay, so let's start this sucker up. Just gotta connect this here. Oops, disconnected. Okay, I've got a 500 ohm variable resistor between the emitter of this transistor and the ground. So now when I keep it... So until then... Um... Whatever. There's no power left to energize the relay, so the relay opens again. Well, I'm sorry about that. My microphone it decided to cut off while I was talking. I'm sorry, Clarence. You're just so boring. I didn't want to hear you anymore, so I shut myself up. There you go, everybody. Scratch CD. All you need is a fuck up. Okay, my microphone is feeding back a little bit. Alright, my microphone is feeding back a lot. Oh, oh my god. I think I've broken it. That soldering iron on there. I thought that thing was on, it started burning everything. And I think the reason is because this wire, well, they didn't go through the perceptive to the bigger. So, there's no, what happened to the winner? Hang on. I ran out of words while I was talking, so my mouth just trailed off there. So until then, stay tuned and... Well, I guess that's it, really. Oh look, I've grown a body. <laughs>